running. If I'm picking a running exercise, I'm thinking to myself, what joints are involved in, in the movement, in running? We know it's every joint. What planes of motion is involved? We've got all three planes of motion, transverse, sagittal, and frontal are all involved in running. Then I think to myself, we've got a lot of pronation, we've got a lot of supination, we've got a lot of internal, external rotation of the hip, and we've got a lot of rotation in the upper body, the trunk. We've got our thoracic spine is going to go one way, and our cervical spine to keep us level is going to go the opposite way. And we've got a lot of acceleration and deceleration going on. The deceleration is going to be probably one of our biggest risk factors when it comes to getting injured. So if I'm picking a running exercise and I want it to be functional, I think to myself, I want pronation, I want supination, I want internal external rotation of the hip, I want the thoracic spine going one way, I want the cervical spine going the opposite way, and I want acceleration and deceleration. The only way to, way to train yourself in deceleration is to do it, is to jump and decelerate the movement. Jumping and decelerating the movement on its own is okay, but you need it to transfer over to the specific sport or the specific activity you're going to do. If it's running, you want acceleration from the back leg, deceleration onto the front leg, holding yourself, decelerating, getting that internal rotation. Thoracic spine rotate the same way, cervical spine rotating the opposite way. So what we're going to do this exercise is just really, 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 really easy. It's just going to be accelerating off the back leg. So off the back leg, as we jump, this is our acceleration. This is where we take off. So we've got plant flexion. As we take off of this back leg, we've got supination. We've got we've got supination of the heel of the calcaneus. That's going to supinate. So that's going to turn in as we land on the front foot. Our our heel is going to either, it's going to do the opposite. So we're going to have inversion and supination, and we're going to have inversion and uh, pronation of the front foot here. So we need to come off one, explode, and we need this leg to then, as we land, to catch us, because that's what's going to happen when we run. Fair enough, we're not going to be jumping like that, but we're still going to be accelerating, decelerating. So we need to come off of here, we need to scoot to fire, we need to come off, and we need to land on this leg here. As we do it, we need to land, we need pronation, we need the knee to come in slightly because that's going to happen when you run whether you like it or not, you actually need it to, to a certain extent. So we're going to come off this hip, we're going to fire this glute, come across, we're going to land here. As we land, we want rotation to the left and then we want cervical spine rotation to the right. So we come from here, we jump, come in, bang, it's important. When we do it, we don't just stay upright, even though we try to do that when we're running, we try to stay upright. With this exercise, I've designed it so we want to lean a little bit, but we're not bending forwards. What we're actually doing is we're pushing this hip back to get this glute to fire, because we want internal rotation of the hip. If we do it excessively when we're exercising internal rotation, when we do it slightly less when we're running, our body's more than likely to handle it. So we come off this back leg, we come across, we land. So now because my foot's going to pronate and roll in, this glute's going to fire to decelerate that motion. So we jump off the back leg, come in and turn. It's decelerating, my body's leaning this way, all my decelerators now are kicking in to explode, to jump this way. But we keep the head forwards. If I jump and go this way and let my body turn, I'm getting everything I want at the hip, but I'm not mimicking the movement I do when I'm running because I'm not keeping my eyes on the distance here. You don't run, you go like this. You run and you turn one way and your head stays this way. This is why it's important to get the cervical spine moving as well. So as we jump, we jump, we land, we come in, we kick the head forward. So now we've got then different rotations I was saying about and we're here. So we pick up a light weight. So we start here, we come down, we come in, we go and that is the movement. So we explode off the back leg, we come down, explode, we land. So that's the movement. Remember, we're not leaning forwards, but we want this, it looks like we're leaning because we're going into a slight posterior tilt because we want this hip to close in, because that is going to load us 
to explode. So the next one we have the ball in one hand. Here we come across. The reason we have the ball then in one hand is because we get the elasticity in the fascia as well. Because the ball is in one hand, we've now got more force taking us this way. So now decelerates our glutes, our lats, everything in this posterior sling oblique system has to kick in fire to pull us back. And then we do it in the opposite hand as well, we come across and across. You can do it with one in each hand, I prefer to just have both hands together. And then just one handed. It's important that you turn into the hip and you keep the head going that way. So you turn into the hip in the head and stay the same way. So you're training all the segments of the spine, you're training the body to move as a unit and training all these individual movements, all the rotations we get from running, we're just doing it in an excessive way to train it. So when we go out there, it's a lot easier for, obviously for our body to deal with. The main thing is the deceleration and the acceleration, because the acceleration and deceleration is where you're going to get injured. People pull their calves, they pull their Achilles tendons, and it's usually because their body can't handle acceleration and deceleration. So by training the movement, so we're down, accelerating, down, like this, you're training the acceleration and the deceleration. So you just jump as high or low as you like. Obviously, start off as low, just coming across. And then as you get better at it, you can come up and train the movements however you want. Obviously, higher and faster. So remember, it's the deceleration, you'll get injured. With this exercise, if you've got postural problems going on that you haven't yet sorted out, so if you've got a knee rotating in or a hip that's a bit ganked up, or, or say one of your QLs isn't working right, if you've got any postural problems, you probably wouldn't go on this exercise. I'd probably sort out the postural, postural problems you've got first and then go on to this exercise. Because even though it's an easy exercise, there's a lot going on there. There's a lot of explosive power. There's a lot of acceleration, deceleration. There's a lot of rotation. There's a lot of torque going through your body, your fascia, your muscles to explode out to the other way. So if you've got any imbalances, if your body's already going too much one way and you take it further that way, then you've got a good chance it's going to get injured. So you just got to be a bit more careful with that one. Okay, cheers.